In this video, I want to compare three different AI-based audio enhancing tools that have changed how I shoot videos. Just take a look at this first example. Now we are outside. Now we are outside. There's a back mode for this in the code. Okay, that's kind of funny. Um, in the end of the video, I will show you how you get this kind of results. But really, uh, here's another example that is actually more practical. Now we are in an echo space and there's a lot of echo, as you can hear. So really, these tools can change how you shoot your videos if your videos have talking people in them. And I guess a lot of us do. I'm going to compare three different tools. The first one is DaVinci Resolve's voice isolation tool that can be found on the studio version. Then I'm going to compare a Crumple Pop Echo Remover AI plugin. It's a paid plugin that you can install pretty much to any uh, audio software. And then there's one called Adobe Podcast Enhance. And this is a free online tool that probably is going to find its way to Adobe software eventually. And to hear the difference between these samples that I'm going to show you next, I recommend using high, qual high quality headphones, at least some kind of headphones. I'm using Mace. Uh, these are really good, uh, like really high fidelity headphones. So you can hear the difference. Uh, none of these tools are perfect. All of them have their strengths and weaknesses. And in the end of the video, I will give you my recommendations, which one to use for what kind of situation. And um, yeah, I guess that's it. Let's just start with the first tool. Okay, let's take a look at the first tool, DaVinci Resolve's voice isolation tool. So here I have a bunch of test clips. I have four groups. The first one is an echoey room. Then we have one outside and then in less echoey room, like a normal interview set. And then we have a voiceover. And first we're going to listen to the in-camera microphone. Then we're going to listen to the uh, Zoom H5. And then we're going to listen to the iPhone, which is next to the Zoom H5. And then first you're going to listen to the original sound and then mid, uh, mid take, I'm going to switch to the processed uh, audio. So let's take a look at the first one. Now we are in an echo space and there's a lot of echo as you can hear. Now we are in an echo space and there's a lot of echo as you can hear. Now we are in an echo space and there's a lot of echo as you can hear. Okay, out of this, the in-camera mic, I don't think it made a, like, it didn't make it so good that it would be uh, usable. Uh, for the Zoom H5, I think it did a better job. Uh, it kept her voice sounding natural, but it, is, it wasn't so good at removing all the room echo from, from, from the recording. But I think that it is, it's, it's an improvement for the quality. Not as good as with the other tools. And with the iPhone, even when the iPhone has a lower codec on the actual recording file, it was able to uh, kind of clean out it quite well. But it's not as good for removing room echo as the other tools. Let's go to the next one. Now we are outside and there's a background noise. Now we are outside and there's some background noise as you can hear. Now we are outside and there's some background noise as you can hear. Okay, out of this one, the first one, the in-camera microphone one. Um, it wasn't able to re re uh, recover it, and I wasn't, I wasn't expecting that. But the Zoom H5, uh, it really improved this, this quality. Out of these, all of these tools, I think this is the best for re removing background noise, this background waterfall. It was able to do it quite well. Not as well with the iPhone footage because, well, maybe because of the compression or some other thing. The iPhone is as close to my, uh, my mouth as the Zoom S5, but still it wasn't able to kind of recover. Maybe there's less information in, in the iPhone, iPhone uh, recording because of the compression. But out of this, I really, I really liked how it was able to remove the background uh, noise. Let's go to the next one. Now we are on an interview set and there's a bit of room echo as you can hear. Now we are on an interview set and there's a bit of room echo as you can hear. Okay, here the in-camera microphone again wasn't able to uh, recover it to a uh, usable uh, quality standard, but with the True Mates 5 I think it, it did a good job. It, it did clean out the voice and took a bit of the room echo away, but not as much as, as the other tools. And then let's listen to this voiceover one. Now we are recording a voiceover and there's almost no echo. I would say it did a good job here, uh, but it did change the, the kind of tone of my voice. Uh, it made it a bit more hollow. 
So it's not the best tool for cleaning out voiceovers. But it did a good job on just cleaning it out in general. It did change, it made, made me sound a bit more hollow. But anyway, so those are like the voiceover. Let's go to the next tool. Okay, same setup, and let's start with the echo room. Now we are in an echo space, and there's a lot of echo, as you can hear. Now we are in an echo space, and there's a lot of echo, as you can hear. Now we are in an echo space, and there's a lot of echo, as you can hear. Okay, out of these three, the in-camera microphone, not usable. It gave her robotic sound. Uh, but the Zoom H5, that's actually quite good. I would say it, it kept her sounding natural and it did remove the background noise. So I'm really happy with this. I think this is the best tool for removing like room echo in general. But unfortunately, it wasn't able to do it so well with the iPhone uh, recording, maybe because of the compression again. Okay, let's listen to the outside one. Now we are outside and there's a background Now we are outside and there's some background noise, as you can hear. Now we are outside and there's some background noise, as you can hear. Okay, the in-camera mic, no luck, uh, not, uh, not usable, of course, that wasn't, uh, I wasn't expecting that. And then uh, the Zoom H5, it did a good job, not as good as this, uh, the voice isolation tool, uh, but it's, it's kind of usable, I would say, uh, though you can really hear this kind of like weird noise gate, like when I stop talking, it kind of, the background noise goes away, background noise goes away and when I talk, start talking again it comes back a bit so that's slightly annoying if you notice it but if it's okay for you i guess this is a good alternative for the voice isolation tool and again it wasn't able to do it as well with the iphone footage i guess this is uh, like a, we have established that already that the recording quality the codec needs to be good for these tools to work okay let's go to the next one now we are on an interview set and there's a bit of room echo as you can hear now we are on an interview set and there's a bit of room echo, as you can hear. Here I would say that the in-camera microphone, again, unusable, gave her a robotic sound. Uh, but the Zoom H5, when it was closer uh, and when there's a good codec on the uh, recording, I think it did a really good job of removing the room echo, as we established in the first batch of uh, tests. Let's listen to the voiceover one now. Now we are recording a voiceover and there's almost no echo. And here I would say that this really shines. Um, it didn't distort my voice, so it, it still sounded like the same microphone and the same voice, but it just cleaned out the voice in general. Like there was a, just a bit of room echo if you listen really, uh, like really, really carefully, and it removed that without distorting my voice. It sounds like if you're, re if you're listening to this with some not as good headphones you probably don't even hear a difference here so that's actually a good thing because it means that it doesn't distort your voice okay let's go to the next one okay out of a podcast enhance this is the most aggressive on kind of rebuilding your voices from scratch and it will have some funny consequences later but let's listen to the first batch now we are in an echo space and there's a lot of echo as you can hear now we are in an echo space and there's a lot of echo as you can hear now we are in an echo space and there's a lot of echo as you can hear okay the first one no luck it made her sound very weird but the zoom h5 i think uh, the, this tool made a quite a good job on like giving her a clear clear voice but it, it didn't remove all the room echo it kind of like that can be actually a good thing if you kind of like that you still have a bit of echo in your recording and then this might be a good option but it didn't do as good of a job with the iphone footage because of um, mentioned reasons uh, let's listen to the outside one now we are outside and there's a background noise in the room again now we are outside and there's some background noise as you can hear now we are outside and there's some background noise as you can hear okay out of this, the first one, the in-camera mic, this is kind of funny. It kind of makes me uh, talk gibberish. It sounds kind of like English, but it's not really English anymore. But then with the Zoom H5, I think it did a really good job on removing the background noise, but it did change my voice. Like it sounded, well, it sounds like I'm in a studio talking to a podcast microphone or something. It kind of distorts my my sound a bit, but it's uh, almost at, as good as the DaVinci Resolve's voice isolation for removing background noise. And it did do, do a quite okay job with the iPhone footage, uh, iPhone recording as well. So if you are, if you're recording with an iPhone outside, maybe this is the best tool for you. Okay, let's go to the next one. 
Now we are on an interview set. And there's a bit of room echo, as you can hear. Now we are on an interview set. And there's a bit of room echo, as you can hear. And here again, the in-camera microphone, a robotic sound, but the Zoom H5, really, really good, I would say. It, it does change the, the, the voice and change how it sounds like. It changes the style, like you record it with a different microphone, but it's, uh, I would say that this is really good for this purpose as well. Okay, let's listen to the voiceover. Now we are recording a voiceover and there's almost no echo. And here I think it did do a good job, but uh, it does still sound like a different microphone. So if you really like your tone of your microphone, maybe this is not the best tool. But for voiceovers, I guess this is still good because I guess uh, voiceovers often are recorded in kind of low, low, close proximity to your, your mouth. The microphone is quite close. Because I think this, this tool in general uh, is kind of like quite aggressively rebuilding your voice. And I think it often gives this kind of like proximity effect. So my microphone is there and it's kind of this far, but if I come very close, you can like hear me more. Well, of course, I'm, I'm quieting down my voice, but you can get this kind of proximity effect. It kind of this effect that you can kind of feel that you are, that whoever is talking is talking very close to the microphone. So I think this has a bit of that, that it makes everything sound like you were uh, on a podcast stage, like talking very close to the microphone. But in general, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm really happy with uh, this tool as well. So as a conclusion, I would say that the voice isolation tool in DaVinci Resolve is best for removing background noise, like in the outside clip one. Uh, the Crumple Pop uh, Echo Remover AI is best for removing room echo and keeping your voices sounding the same. So it's not altern it's not kind of distorting how it sounds. So it's good for voiceovers, for example, and for room echo. And the other uh, podcast enhanced is kind of in between somewhere there, because it like more aggressively rebuilds your voice. So it kind of sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't work so well. But really good to have that in the toolbox as well. And now as a like kind of a conclusion on how these tools have changed how I record, is that for example. I don't pay that much attention anymore to kind of uh, acoustically treating the recording or uh, environment. For example, like this microphone here, and if I turn off the, uh, the echo remover here, you can hear that this room is not the best space to kind of record uh, this kind of talking head things. It would be beneficial if I would have like acoustic treatment pretty much everywhere. But when I turn on the uh, this echo remover tool it, it's kind of like I, it saves me a lot of time or <laughs> material uh, like I don't need to place any acoustic uh, treatments to this room to make this a good place to record uh, but still the same things apply as before that you still need to have your microphone like quite close to your subject to get the, the, the quality you want you can't uh, can't rely on the in-camera microphone and then again the quality of the microphone and especially the quality of the recording that your recorder gives you uh, still uh, is crucial so like don't skip on those but it really helps me like on saving time to like I don't need to treat uh, spaces where I want to shoot or I can just shoot in untreated places as well so this has really changed the way I uh, like do my videos and it has saved me a lot of time but yeah I hope this comparison was helpful and see you in the next one and subscribe to the channel. Bye. Hello Ducky. Would you like to give a, a voice demo for us? <laughs>